What up, Screen Fiends? I'm GB, and you're tuned in to Screenheads TV, where we like to discuss all the wonderful things appearing on your movie and your TV screens. In this episode, I'm going to give my review of Fargo Season 3, Episode 3, titled The Law of Non-Contradiction. Okay, the synopsis for the episode reads, Gloria revisits her stepfather's past to try and find some answers. So, that's what we get for the whole entire episode. It's just Gloria, nobody else. Um, I'll give you my opinions on that later. Not that they're really all bad. I love Carrie Coons, and I'm, I'm liking the character of Gloria. I usually like the police characters in Fargo because they're usually very interesting in the way they go about uh, their investigations and whatnot. And I'm usually not a fan of cop shows or the way police are portrayed on TV. Um, as always being like the heroes and the good guys. But Fargo kind of shows the flaw to, to it. Um, as well as making them the good guys. So I, I, I appreciate that um, at, from a storytelling character standpoint. Okay, so yeah, that's what we get the whole episode is Gloria and her journey. So um, really we deal with two characters and two star story arcs. So I'll break them up that way. We got the Gloria story arc with her tracking down the clue, you know, the clues and, and find, trying to find the answers. And then we have the, um, Pops, a.k.a. Uh, Ennis Stussy, a.k.a. Thaddeus, forgot the last name. <laughs> um, then we have his, like, flashback storyline, and we'll discuss that after. Okay, so first let's do Gloria. Now we got, um, she comes to L.A., and right away I notice, and I think it's great, because this is the first time in the world of Fargo we've seen... Well, no, we did see Lester and Malvo in Vegas. But this is really the first time we see somebody from Fargo, that area, Minnesota. I know, that's not how you say it. I sound like a Swedish guy. <laughs> I won't do that accent again. I won't even try. I absolutely promise. All right, so um, the thing I noticed right away is... Seeing her in this in LA or Hollywood or wherever they are, California somewhere, she totally feels like a fish out of water. You see how how polite she is, and not that everybody else is being rude. Look, I come from New York. This is a place where even when people aren't being rude, we are um, you know misconstrued or taken as being rude. Right? So, and, and I think it's the same way with a lot of people in California. Even though people aren't intentionally trying to be rude or disrespectful, it's just the way that we come across in our attitudes, mannerisms, and speech. So, the fact how everyone seems rude in comparison to her, I think was great because she doesn't know how to react to these people. I don't think she expects any of these people to, to behave the way that they're behaving. Because people don't behave that way where she's from. And I just love that in the storytelling. It feels so real. Um, and even the way Glenn Howerton's character, the guy from It's Always Sunny, who was amazing in this episode. Everything from his look, to his dialogue, to his delivery. Great, great, great. Um, if you don't know who I'm talking about, he plays the cop that tries to basically uh, um, hook up with Carrie Coon's glorious Gloria. Alright, so... Um, you know, she, she doesn't expect, especially him, because he's another a fellow police officer, to behave in the way that they're behaving. And her reaction to me is authentic. Uh, amazing job. This Look, this show always nails it when it comes to the acting and the writing. You know that. And I'll talk about it more as we go along in this uh, review. All right. Um, so, yeah. So, she so she meets him. She, the lady at the hotel gives her a hard time. Poor, poor woman gets her car stolen, like, immediately. Um, so as soon as she gets to, to this far-off land, she, um, you know, she's experiencing what the real world is like outside of Minnesota, I guess. And, uh, of course, uh, you know, only bad things seem to be... Oh, not only bad, but strange things as well. We'll get to that in a minute. All right, so she... Um, so. Interacting with all these people and having them all be jerks. And then, you know, she tries to get help from Glenn Harrington, the police officer. And uh, basically, you know, he tells her he tried to help, but you know he didn't try and help. All he's trying to do is sleep with her. That's it. Um, and, you know, she doesn't realize that until the very end. And he actually has 
to say it to her in order for her to realize it. He actually has to say in the bar. Um, <laughs> I loved it too. <laughs> uh, am I going to get laid tonight or what? And then she says, nope. Thanks for the beers. Grab the beers and, and he's out. Uh, he's such a good douchebag character. I really, I, I hope that's not considered foul language or profanity. If it is, I apologize, YouTube or whoever's reviewing this video. I didn't mean it. Sorry. All right. So, um, he just plays such a good jerk. Even in It's Always Sunny, he's a good jerk. And then, you know, she goes to the diner and meets the waitress, the former actress. And, you know, she lies to her the first time. And then the second time she goes to meet her, she, uh, she spills the beans and tells her the whole story, which I'll get to in a second. Oh, and she also goes and meets the movie producer who talks with one of those voice boxes. And he lives in, I guess, a nursing home or some sort of uh, care facility. And he doesn't look well, but he is a very old man. Um, now, I imagine that he talks with the voice box because of what happens to him in the flashback, which, again, I'll get to in a second. Um, yeah, and, and he doesn't want to give her any information either. But he does say this this cool little story, and I wish I remembered it. Uh, I Maybe I'll do a separate video just on it because I'm sure if I dissect it, I'll be able to pick some things apart. Um, that I thought was really great. You know, it's one of those great Coen Brothers, Quentin Tarantino moments where it's just like this, the, or even Robert Rodriguez, where it's just this uh, really good dialogue in a quiet moment from um, a somewhat scary person, right? Okay. Uh, so, all right, so that's it with that storyline. She basically finds out that um, this was Pops, he was this author, he wrote this screenplay, and, um, these two people basically conned him out of all of his money, cheated him out of all of his money, and that's why, uh, he ended up having to run away and change his identity, essentially. Where the story goes from there, I guess, you know, from that point, he meets, uh, Carrie Coons' mom, gets married, blah, 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 the rest is history, I guess, um... Hopefully we'll find out. I'm sure we'll find out the rest of it because this seems like it's going to play an important role in what's happening. I think somehow his true identity is going to come out and then maybe there's mobsters or somebody looking for him uh, and then they're going to end up coming after him. But I think I'll talk about that in a prediction video. So the flashbacks, yeah. We get um, Pops as a young man who's basically... Our Lester Nygaard or our uh, Jesse Plemons character from season two or uh, William H. Macy's character from the movie. That shy, timid, reserved, nice guy who gets entangled or forced into bad uh, decisions and situations. So, uh, yeah, he, he's, he's, a, he's an author and he meets this guy in a very strange way in a bar and the guy basically tells him he's a movie producer and he can, you know, turn his book into a movie, whatever. Now, he slowly milks money from the guy. Now, are, is he a real movie producer? I think so. I just think he's a schemer and a con man, but still a movie producer. And I, just like I think the woman is a real actress in, in the show. Uh, but they just saw it, uh, an opportunity to take advantage of a shy, weak man. And they did. And... The rest you saw. So he gets angry. He beats the guy with the cane almost to death. I imagine that's how he gets the voice box and all that. Now, and, he, and then he doesn't do anything to, to the actress. Now, to me, it doesn't seem like... Oh, there was something I forgot about Carrie Coons' character. I'll get back to it in a second. Now, it doesn't seem like this was a bad enough thing for him to do. To have to run away and change his identity. But... Maybe this guy was connected and he sent some mobsters or some gangsters after um, after Thaddeus Pops. Or or maybe the Lord does come after him. I don't know. But I think he runs away right at that moment. Because when he throws up in the toilet, he sees it says, I believe it said Dennis Stussy. But the D was like scratched out or faded. So it only said Ennis. And he sees that. And I guess he's like, well, I got to run away. I got to get away from this. Boom. There's a new name, a new identity. Let's pick up and go, I guess. But hopefully we'll we'll get to see the continuation of that flashback. And I really think we will. toward More towards the end of the season, though. I think that'll be more like a episode six. But, uh, six or seven. But who knows? Maybe they want to get that part of the story going. Because I think that's going to play a big part. 
going forward. Like I said, but I'll probably do a predictions video or a topic video just on that. Um, and now I forgot to talk about this real quick about Carrie Coons' story. She finds that weird box that I love oh so much because it's so contradictory, the box itself. Think about the name of the episode, right? The Law of Non-Contradiction. Look at that box. You press a button on it and then a hand comes up from inside the box and pushes the button back. It just doesn't make sense, right? I loved it. It was so weird and so Coen Brothers and so Fargo. I hope it gets explained and it's not just some funny weird thing they stuck in there. And I hope we get to see um, the purpose of that box. I really, really, really do. Um, all right. So uh, the main theme, the idea of this, I guess, would be, you know, um, you think you know somebody, but then... You know, as you uh, dig or question or search, you find out something totally different. Pops came across as this cold, tough guy. And when we see him in the flashback, he is totally not that guy. So I think that's where the theme goes. And that kind of brings me to the title meaning. The law of non-contradiction. I don't understand the non part because the whole episode is a lot of... Con not the whole episode, but there's a lot of contradictions in the episode, I mean, if you look at it, like I said, Pops himself is a contradiction. Where he's a soft, uh, talkative, weak guy. And then when you see him as an old man, he's like this quiet, tough, strong looking dude. So that's a contradiction right there. The box was a contradiction. Press the button, the hand comes out and just pushes it back. It doesn't make any sense, right? Um... What else? I, don't, I know there were some more contradictions. Look at the, the character of the police officer. To, to, to Gloria, I almost called her Nora. Because that's her name in, in The Leftovers. Uh, Carrie Coons. So, I mean, look at Gloria. To her, that cop is a contradiction. He's supposed to be a good guy helping people. And here he is just like, you know, some jerk. Um, there was other contradictions, I'm sure, in there. Um, but... You know, that just gives you an idea of the, the meaning of the title. Now, you can go back and, and rewatch it with that in mind. And maybe you come up with some more contradictions or contradictory stuff. And then you can hit me up in the comments and let me know all about it. All right. Um, production standouts, it's the same as always. Okay. Acting, amazing. Uh, directing, amazing. Writing, amazing. The, the, the production, it's just all great. It's, it's a movie. It's, it's fantastic. No complaints ever there for this show. Uh, my favorite moment, my favorite uh, thing or moment, I have to say I'm torn between the box because I loved the box. Even though it played no part in the episode and it was so weird, I loved it. But I also loved the bar scene with Glenn Howerton's police officer, I don't remember his name, and Gloria. I love that scene so much. Um, even when they bring back in the older guy that was on the plane with her. Uh, love it, love it, love it so much. Um, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm torn between those two things. So I'm going to pick two favorite things for this episode. The, uh, my least favorite moment of the episode was not having, uh, the Stussy brothers and, and, and the rest of the cast. Look, I love the show. I love the writing, the acting, everything. I said that. I love Carrie Coons and I'm, and, and I'm liking her character, but... I missed those other people. So that's my main problem with the episode. The standout for the episode? Um, the standout for the episode for me is going to be, um, you know, uh, Glenn Harrington's character. No, I'm sorry. No, he was great comic relief. But Carrie Coons gets the episode standout. Because you know what? The way she acted being that fish out of water... Felt, you felt her, how uncomfortable she was. You felt how out of place she was. You felt how she did not belong in that picture. And that's all credited to the actress and the way she presents it in her face. And of course, the way she's directed. So that's the standout for me is Gloria Carrie Coons' character. My rating for this episode. Now, I want to give it a super high rating like I do for Fargo. But... I'm going to take a few points off for not having the, the full ensemble cast at least a little bit. 
um, and not and you know not having that criminal criminal element when that criminal element is there and it's done so well like Fargo when it's not there you miss it in, uh, unmeasurably is the word I was looking for sorry about that um, all right so yeah so I'm gonna give it a four out of five still a solid rating higher than I think I would give most shows that I'm not in love with I know most shows I review on here I give higher ratings. But that's because the only shows that I feel compelled to talk about are the ones that I love. So that's where the bias comes in. Um, all right. Yep, that's it. Solid four out of five. Um, good episode. Could have been better. But we got to learn a little bit more about, you know, some mystery and intrigue. And I love that box. What's in the box? What's in the box? Love that box. All right. Um, sound off down below. Let me know what you thought about the episode. Um, and if you picked up any other contradictions, I definitely want to know about that too. Um, be on the lookout for some more Fargo videos regarding this episode. I think I'll do at least one or two, um, and probably predictions for the next episode, next week's. Um, yep, definitely like, share, subscribe, help out the channel. The way YouTube works is the more activity, the more, um, interaction, that you guys have with the channel, the more YouTube favors me and puts me out there so more people can see me, so I can uh, hopefully make better content and, uh, you know, make me a happier guy, <laughs> if that's even possible. All right, um, have, uh, so yeah, you guys have a great day, and um, that's it for this one. Thanks so much for watching, always appreciate it, and I will see you next time.